And part of why I took that there is a reminder to myself, and hope is a reminder to all of us, that this journey is not a journey for some of us who are graduates of the university. This journey can be a journey for some of us who may be living in Guyana. It's not a journey that can be a journey for those of us who live afar and have a passion to contribute. Not even a journey for those of us who are Guyanese. It's a journey for all who have got a commitment to rebuilding this university. And so I'd like to thank everyone for sharing elements of history, elements of sociology, elements of therapy, use Rose's term. And I'm hoping that coming out of this will not only be a sensitivity to the collectivity of the effort needed to propel the Renaissance, but we will understand and appreciate the personal bonding that can result Personal bonding has begun in many respects, but I'm hoping it can be accentuated and taken to another level. But my second point is this. I made a point towards the end of our first conference that married last year that I'd like the group to come back and to have an opportunity to reflect and prospect. And so once we resume from the break, one regular minute, not that I I'm going to ask the Deputy Vice Chancellors who are here at the Bursar to help us understand some of what we've been able to do since that first year. <laughs> And then we're going to have a chance to hear, well, not only what we've been able to do, because I've asked them to say a little bit about looking forward. And the looking forward is with a view to having the ambassadors appreciate ways in which they can help the looking forward to the actual action. We're not looking only for money. And yes, the Vice Chancellor's Fund does need repentance. <laughs> If you feel compelled to leave $100, leave it. We're also looking for ways to have the talent and the relationship network activate, actualize the suit. <coughs> and so I want to thank you for, in the case of some who will be here, and in the case of some who will be joining that journey in a more significant way, like Wayne, thank you for paying forward. Before we take the biology break, and this is the second item, I want to bring formally into our fold a couple of colleagues like Linda. And so we've got their <coughs> instrument. I'm going to ask them then to take the one for Albert back to Texas. So if I can get the photographers and maybe I can get Allison to help initiate. Lillian is in the country. Remember Lillian? She's going to be joining us. She's from Grand Turk. Came in two days ago. She is going to be speaking at Invest as a classmate of mine. Uh, so let me invite Linda Danielson and we'll go back here. <coughs> Hopefully, we can get that screen in the background. Yeah, we'll one stay. Yes. 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 Yes.
31st at the Theatre Guild in Guyana. So you can, it's, the admission is 2,000 to the auditorium. So I think you all like to sit in the auditorium. And the balcony is 1,000. Now, it's my band who fly, currently flying in from the UK. Um, Herbie Marshall, Gavin Mendonza, Collage, Mickey Smith on Pan, and several others. So that's, that's the first part. And the other part is I'm taking this group to the Sea Wall concert on the 7th of August. And then we go to the Burmese concert. That's on the eighth. The Linden concert, you're pleased to know, on the ninth. So we're extending ourselves. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for making it possible for me to be here with my group. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, before you go, on behalf of Diana, if it's, Texas. If it's a presentation, please go to the podium. Yeah. Take a picture. Yeah. On behalf of the Party Global Organization, we would like to help to replenish the Vice Chancellor Fund with 100,000 Guyana dollars just to get us started. Okay. I like the just to get us started. <laughs> Now, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if everyone in this room can be a tall guy? Uh, 
and Ms. Pavini Besarge Roberts, Mr. Alvin Rutherford, and Mr. Alex Pelton Hills. Those are the persons in the team, along with my PA, Ms. Sandra France. And uh, we all came up with this to be our guiding, driving focus in the way we approach this particular initiative. For student grandsons, for improved delivery and efficiency as we go forward and upward. Some major achievements. And we captured them in three quick big areas. We thought it was important for us at all to have a sense of what's there before we pursue what are some of the objectives that were set. And uh, there are some things we discovered and I shared with by Sandra because we got an evidence approach to the way we deal with the various important aspects of academic engagement, the years of research, students, success, teaching and learning, as I said, our field education engagement for which my wonderful friend Rose, we had a long conversation which has been completed and I hope that we have a chance to really profitify that to the class. And uh, our engagement generally with both our internal and external stakeholders meant to improve or advance our work. But there's some quick data that you notice here that we are able to look at 4,000 of the stairs between 2005 and 2010. We gathered that data off of our SRMs, which indicated clearly that we need to do something about moving people forward and ensuring their success. Some of them were around for very long time as well. Uh, we were able to look at the areas of scholarships and, pro and their profiles, particularly as it relates to internal. Those are some of the figures that we must take a note of. One of the things that has happened within the past year is that there has been an increase in the number of our internal staff, the families, who benefited from what we would call labels, and in some ways we say scholarships. And the figures on the long 2016 to 2017 was close to 41.7 million, which related to the fact that we had uh, a movement from between 87, three years ago to 93, to 180 of our colleagues who been able to benefit from that. Uh, our program delivery aspects, we have worked tremendously to ensure that one, we collect as much data and we still continue to analyze such data because that has enabled us to focus on what the challenges are in order to respond to our colleagues and faculty. The other area that we looked at the relationship building faculty and the cooperation and advancement, both internal and external, uh, you notice that we have been doing some technical advice services. We were part of the prison survey recently and working along with uh, some other agencies to uh, pursue the whole issue of family interventions as it relates to violence. That's a project we're talking about now. Other technical advisory engagements included uh, engagements in environmental areas as well as other aspects of teaching and learning. And, and this, I must say, would have brought in some amount of funds into the coffers of the university as well at the office of services. We are working on ensuring that from the outset, a percentage of what we are going to earn must go to the university. And uh, my colleagues have been back into that as well. Program development, we have been doing that with the various sectors, including the army, which we are working on still. Uh, for the first time, we'll have a program which will have some components, one the military, military and two an academic component. The first year, they will do their 70 percent and we will do our 30 and the second year, we will do 70 and 80 30. And the hope is that they'll have a much longer program. Uh, we see as part of the exercise that we visited uh, two parts and I su suspect we soon want to speak a little bit more that. We work with the aviation sector as well to develop programs. Apart from those, we are having continuous conversations with other players to ensure that we can build such a external engagement. In the years, obviously, of internships, attachments, the education, as I said before, uh, launching the Distinguished Lectures 
to use it as one of the promises we made, and we were able to complete those. See why farmers, all the shops, system and needs were able to do them. And uh, there are some added areas which didn't come directly on my, on my compute, but you will hear much more about them. Uh, we have also initiated the process of institutionalizing research. You would have heard earlier about our undergraduate research for the first time. We were able to have a uh, dedicated time for undergraduate research, and we're hoping to build up on that, as well as for our faculty, as well as graduate uh, researches in the university. Regularizing the raw chair, you, you obviously will have seen Professor Imani News here. We have had a fruitful discussion on how we will take that chair forward in a very focused way and uh, including some strategic approaches generally. We are seeing visiting professorships, one of the areas that was promised and has been delivered. We have already had uh, visiting professorships in the areas that we need to not only business, but we are hoping to extend that technology and other areas in the university. We have included a grooming and grounding faculty policy. Grooming at end through our young and promising academics who are coming through the various faculties so that we can build their interest into teaching as well as grabbing the best. Okay? Obviously, you are in that pool for the grabbing. So that's what we're doing in the grabbing at all. Uh, so we can talk a little more about that. The uh, and satellite academic operations and procedures, we have already set out information to just reignite our colleagues' interests and refocus them on what are required practices, best practices. And so we started that process. Even this year, of course, allocations, how do we allocate? It's not just by having my friend teach, but there's some set practices. Uh, examination procedures, people setting, marking, and expectations for operational faculty which we are working on for the new year as well as, well as establishing quality assurance working. What we do in academic and 
different has a connection with what PACE does, what PI does, what the registry does. And so therefore, there will be times when colleagues will take lead on some short areas and recognize that they will be for that synergy. Responsiveness requests and important academic requirements. Right? One of the areas that we all also recognize that we have some concerns about. Uh, and this particularly, we are going to push research as one of the main pillars in the university, as well as to enhance what we see as this general level of thinking in the wider society. Right? One of the things my team has been emphasizing is that the university must be the cornerstone for the building and enhancing of the way we think in the graduate society. How analytical we can be and how better we can respond to our challenges and so on. So that's one of the areas that we will think that we can be able to do. We are going to be responsive to requests out there, where it has to do with technical advice and support and so on. And the final slide is the question of how do we go forward? We thought we'd look at some of our challenges to be able to respond to them and so forth or some of the things that we are working on in certain ways, but we intend to, to really accelerate as we go along. Teaching and learning, we want to advance the establishment of the School of Graduate Studies and Research. Uh, one of the brain child of DC, which we hope to take forward, and the center of teaching and learning excellence, for which we have already engaged studies from FIU on. Academic advisement, reference to the success in another area, we are hoping that the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation will be an exemplar and appropriately at our point of reduced progression in the 21st century. Our hope that all the areas that we need to see some level of standard set be established. And so we will be working closely to set the environment of schools with the, the designated, the designated on that aspect. And so we're hoping to spread, for example, advisement across the campus, both campuses as well as IDC, as we hope to get students moving out and not being long overstayers, or some of my colleagues would say professional students. <laughs> Quality assurance. Again, we have started to look at some strategic programs. Obviously, again, beginning, we already have some programs like medicine. Uh, but we also have programs like law. We have programs in business school, and we're hoping to identify programs within the respective faculties for us to start focusing on self study and moving towards registration. On the graduate research, graduate faculty collaborated presentation publications using the press, obviously, when we want the areas we be focusing on. And in some of the we will intensify that both at our access points where we're getting students, as well as externally with the help of PACE and other students in the university so that we can expand our general community. We want to consolidate and expand our academic sources to enhance national thinking, as I said, enhancing synergies and initial capabilities. Uh, we're looking at technology and reconfiguring key academic functions across our units. One of the suggestions I've been discussing with the, with the dean, Esteli, is that we have to revisit and see whether what we've been using all along, whether it's relevant. Using heads of department, for example, ask for respective program. And we bring out the issue of how do we deal with research? How can we help with teaching and advisement and quality assurance? Is it time now to reconfigure our structures within our operational areas along those lines rather than focusing on just portion programs only? Programs can be focused, yes, in one particular area, but these critical functional areas that we want to really enhance should be considered in our structural uh, focusing and, uh, and, and the arrangement. The, the next point has to do with the, the issue of the launching of the second suites of distinguished lectures and establishing the leader chairs and members of professorial activities. We want to consolidate the body chair. 
Uh, we're looking at some challenges already. The challenge of understanding Kenya, strategic programming, and other activities. And so I want to just take this 15 minutes. Yep. Thank you. Let me recommend that we go to registrar next so that we wait until after all the presentations could have been offered, with the exception that registrar has to go right after he's done. So we'll take five minutes after he will have presented how many questions he has. And then we'll go next to Dr. Reynolds, Professor Mohammed, the Bursar, and Mr. Kudu. So, while well, we get the registrars uploaded, I make one comment in two parts on an aspect of what Debbie and just have said. Our law department is one of those very troubled departments, one of the neglected departments. Not sufficient full time instructors. Technology that's behind facilities, that's behind curriculum that is dated. We should be teaching courses in law that are more close to the 20th century, if not in the 21st century. So I'll be commissioning a comprehensive review of the law department. What they teach, how they hire, how we pay. And I have a meeting tomorrow with a person who has arrived for the investiture. I plan to head that review and ask her agency to sort of find some of the funding to do it. But I want to jump start some of the re energizing, some of the renaissance of law. And so, six weeks or so ago, I had a lunch. I can tell you the name because he's amenable. I had lunch with Justice, formerly. Acting Chancellor Carl Singh to have him become the inaugural jurist in residence. We have a lot of judges who have distinguished themselves in Guyana, out of Guyana. And so Carl is amenable to coming and be working out the terms. Give a little panache, give a little prestige, raise the bar. And we'll be doing that with a few other faculties and a few other departments. Delighted to hear. You know, Registrar, you didn't get the chance of declaring your pleasantness. <laughs> but we hear we heard of all the provisions. Who is from Kitty? Who is from a specific street in Kitty? <laughs> but I'm delighted to invite the Registrar to share with us what he has in his 15 minutes. Thank you, sincerely, Vice Chancellor, colleagues, I want to start with two quotations, one familiar. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And the second one is from someone who I have a tremendous amount of love, admiration, and respect for. His Holiness Pope Francis, current pontiff and head of the Catholic Church University, when in addressing a group of educators at Georgetown University, a mere two weeks after assuming his pontificacy, said, and I'm quoting him now, Cona Sendo. Latin expression which when translated into English means to what heights may we not ascend. I want to contextualize that in sharing the vision that we have set ourselves in the registry to create a student focused and student friendly environment in assisting the academic deliverables of our institution. And we attempt to do this and to provide support to some 8,000 
650 students currently enrolled at the University of Ghana. Here at Turkheim, in Burbese, and our four IDC centers at the Queen's College compound, Anna Regina, Linden, and Yvonne And that 8,650 students, so official record, as of 10 minutes after 9 on Wednesday, July 24, 2017. So it is as current as we can. I want to share a little bit about the demographics. 66 and two thirds percent of our population are females. And 72% of that demographic is under the age of 23. So we have a very young, youthful, student population, very energized, driven by technology, and we have to ensure that we meet the critical minds and needs of our students. It is in this context that the admissions division successfully executed career day awareness sessions throughout the length and breadth of the cooperative <coughs> In every region, we have a presence. And the rising out of these career day awareness sessions, we have had 15.2% growth in the applications of students wishing to matriculate for the 2017 2018 academic year. But of significance, we are seeing the fruits out of the labors and vision of our own Vice Chancellor, who started and commenced a focused program of outreach, starting within CARICOM. And he led a team in January this year to Grenada and had meetings with the Prime Minister of Grenada, Education Ministers, Health Minister, and critical actors. And in our application process, we have had a 315% increase in applications from Grenada. In April of this year, Professor Paloma Mohammed led a two-member delegation to Antigua and Barbuda and St. Lucia and met with the Prime Ministers of both countries, Deputy Prime Minister, Ministers of Education, who hosted successful engagements with Guyanese residing there, and we have seen and increasing expressions from these two CARICOM member states for admission into our university in 2017. But I must note that in our discussions with the Prime Minister of Antigua, when we indicated that we were launching a brand new school of entrepreneurship and business innovation, he indicated Prime Minister Brown that he couldn't wait because his public sector investment program implementation was at a staggering low rate of between 10 to 12 percent and wanted the school of business to be one that would outreach to Antigua's public sector and deliver short focused programs on island for the people of Antigua and Barbuda. This is an area that we see tremendous potential. The same thing was echoed 
to our distinguished Vice Chancellor of Independent Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell of Grenada and we got the same sentiments from the Deputy Prime Minister of St. Lucia. SEBI has certainly attracted the attention of our regional partners. We have developed new features in the SRMS, the Students' Records Management System, to meet the demands of different types of data. And because we have now a responsibility and a commitment to the world body of registrars and admissions officers called ACRO for data in a particular manner, in the not too distant future we have got to move away from the homegrown system that we have and in fact move to a robust security film system that is going to cost us some money. Sonis Web is one that is used by more than 80% of the membership of ACRO, which consists of 2,910 universities and colleges around the world and in every continent. And we've got to find the close to 500,000 US dollars to purchase this software. As our population grows, we need a system that is secure and a system that can be easily manipulated and friendly both to the students and the faculty and staff. Within the last year, we have increased the number of old transcripts that were issued in the 60s and 70s that are now in the SRNS. <coughs> And for the first time in the last year, we have secured the services of a guidance and counseling officer on this campus. The industry, tertiary education industry standard is that for every 100 students at a tertiary institution, there should be one counselor. We have a capacity gap not only at UG, but it exists nationally and regionally. So we have one counselor that is serving the needs of 8,650 students. Unacceptable. And that is why she has been forced to use a network of counselors by, from the ministries of education and health. But we've got to increase our establishment not to get to this industry standard of 100 to 1, but something that will really ensure that there is effective guidance and counseling. The long anticipated internet service at the Dennis Irving Hall of Residence was in fact done, and this is a dorm that accommodates 25 mostly regional students. And this has been monumentally of importance to them. It helps with connectivity with their family, friends, and relatives in the CARICOM and the states to which they came. The Interfaculty Athletics was successfully hosted at Lenora Synthetic Track, away from the campus. And it is my understanding, I'm told, that it was the largest in years of participation. Professor Scott and myself among the senior members of the administration stayed for the entire duration of this. And we had, for the first time, the inaugural small goal football competition. And uh, sports will have to feature as an integral part of our deliverables as we seek to promote a holistic type of training and development as more and more students have been expressing an interest in active sporting competitions. And with the Vice Chancellor's leadership and support, we were able <coughs> to have executed both Uber Reese, no, sorry, here, 
for a kind of we've been doing this since Barbies for the new academic year, an inaugural etiquette training in which 50 of our club members benefited and they have attested to the significant improvement and need for this in a wider context. And I'd be engaged with the Deputy Vice Chancellor for academic engagement to see how we can fashion a structured program to treat with this. We do have challenges. GTT continues not to have reliable and predictable internet access. And not only is it affecting us, but it's university wide, and we hope that we can have a conversation in which we can, in fact, speak with other actors for the new academic year in which this basic tool in the teaching learning process can be reliable and predictable. Electrical shortages and outages and poor backup systems clearly is a concern to the registry because the most important and sacrosanct element that we have to do, deal with a student's record. And there is no scope for error in that. And we've had some difficulties with power outages and losing significant data and having to manually input again. The slow acquisition of furniture and stuff, basic things like ink and toner. Uh, we are happy though that there have been some significant improvement over the last couple of months through the very accommodating position and acknowledgement of the need to the office of the Bursa. And I want to use this opportunity to personally thank the Bursa for her intervention and time. Things we do to assist the teaching learning process. We continue to be challenged with late implementation and approval of new and revised programs at the registrar's office. This is important, but at times we have to depend on the faculty. And I'm working with Professor Scott, who has provided and his team excellent service and support in accelerating this very important element of our deliveries. We continue to be plagued by late commencement of classes on the various <coughs> master's program in particular, but this is not, in fact, immune only to master's degree, but it's very evident here. The absence of direct lines, in particular, and this is not basic, in our student services division, really created some immeasurable challenges, servicing 8,000 plus students. The living apartment and quarters of our manager at the NBS dorm, with assistance of the bursary, in fact, undergone some significant rehabilitation. There are a few minor things that we want for our manager to live as though he was living in his home because he spends most of his daylight and nighttime here, and we have to find the resources in order to be in competent. What are the recommendations? Additional telephone lines, dedicated internet access, adequate space to service the students, and I'm happy to report in this context, the government of Guyana has provided the registry with a brand new building to house the 87 staff members that service the registry. I believe some of my colleagues refer to it as the capital. <laughs> this is distinct from the White House. <laughs> but the upon separates at the university campus, the capital of the White House. So we are going to be moving into that facility, hopefully, by the first or second week in August. So we, we want to thank the bursary again for going above and beyond the normal call of duty for helping us 
to complete the infrastructure work. And I want you to join me in giving her a tremendous round of applause. We have presented a comprehensive budget for 2018 fiscal year, and our expectation is that we will see some significant enhanced student services. I wanted to touch on three other areas of tremendous focus that the university is registered in. The first is in the governance reform of the university. A number of studies have been done, but it took this new chancellor and this new vice chancellor to take some of the studies that were on shelves for years, off the shelf, and they're accelerated. Eight meetings of the Governance Reform Committee, headed by former Vice Chancellor, Professor Carrington and his team. But we couldn't do this without the support of the Office of Planning and International Develop Engagement, who supported and created an environment to get the resources for us to um, proceed with this and be on target for its completion. You may not know, but of our student population, approximately 1,050 students require housing. We have two dorms that can accommodate just under 75. So what has happened in the last 15 years is that residents and citizens around this area, Turkine, Cummings Lodge, Industry, have benefited substantially from the presence of the university and have made available housing, bottom houses sometimes not, very conducive. But the university now has to focus its attention on greater student accommodation, both from our regional outreach and more and more students are coming from places like Magaruma, Morawana, Matthews Bridge, Rupununi, and we have to find accommodation for them. And in this context, student housing becomes tremendously important and critical. And right now, the university is locked into negotiations with a conglomerate out of Trinidad and Tobago to put down as a start a 100 facility complex for student housing. I have personally seen how student housing has transformed the St. George's University in Grenada. In fact, today, 70% of their revenue is not derived from tuition, but from housing. And that is a long-term vision that the university must have if we are to satisfy the needs of our growing student population, both within the Cooperative Republic and our outreach now. And you may not know this, the University of Ghana has a very diversified student population with students from 34 different countries, including Fiji, the Solomon Islands, Australia, um, four countries in Africa, CARICOM well represented. When I was a student at Fiji, I remember um, having just one, remember, one foreign student, Carlos, uh, Professor, did you see where he was from? Turks and Caicos. We have 34, a very diversified student population. And a major deficit over the years was in the development of policies that are transparent and predictable in the academic environment. And the registry has been taking the lead in the development with Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor Scott's office, and we are about 80% completed in a robust and comprehensive new examinations policy that has been very informed by participation of all the faculties at the school level. And we hope to present this to the academic board 
for its consideration and adoption in time for the new academic year and detailed progress policy. And finally, I want to say, it is as a result of your intervention, your support, that I can proudly state today that for the first time in the 54-year history of this university, we are in a position from the support of people to Maryland in scanning our primary source documents, which commenced in June of 2017, of all of our academic records from 1963 to 2006, and we have started that process of scanning and digitizing our records. And I want to thank you for the vision of ensuring this is done. And as I thank you in anticipation for your continued support to the most dynamic department in the University of Ghana, <laughs> and I say so with a phenomenal abundance of sincerity, but modesty as well. <laughs> Too often, our registry assistants complain that their computers are not working. We are in need of 15 computers, laptop computers, as we start this academic year. Allow me to thank you in anticipation for your generous contribution and donation so that we will start 2017-2018 academic year with brand new hardware. I thank you and God bless you.
That is a significant challenge that is going back for decades. There was an alum from the class of 69 who called me from Canada. He said, by Judge, I saw the report. I'm glad somebody's doing something about this place. It hurts me as not only a Guyanese and alum, but as an educator. And sometimes you hear, we've got a class size problem, yes. But some of these classes are small. Small classes. It has become the culture of taking their own time. Some of it is not the fault of individual lecturers. Some of it is the fault of how our faculties work. The disconnect between the faculties and the registry. We have got to get our act together and do better for our students because it frustrates not only the students, but it creates a disincentive for them to want to give back or to want to speak with pride about this university. Some classes have three students, 10 students, 18 students. You can't turn your grades in with a class of three students in a month. I get very angry when I see this report because we're talking love for the students individually and as an institution, but then we're hurting them in so many ways. I intend it is the last thing I do to get this right. Now here's my final comment. We have grown so large as a university that we don't have the luxury anymore of doing what we've done for all time. Having one massive graduation in November. And so as of this year, we have two ceremonies. You should have seen the cars. Remember those six sent me an email saying, by Chancellor, I heard you talk about having two graduations. I'm convinced we need it. He said, if there was rain, what would we have done? Where would we have parked the cars? That field was a parking lot. We're going to have two graduation ceremonies. Break them up so you have two smaller ceremonies. If you want to keep the individual recognition of coming and shaking the chance to them. But we've got to do some adaptation. And ladies and gentlemen, there are a number of people who are, I was saying to win, Win asked me a question last night. Are all these people who write these negative things about you really against you for the reason they say? I said no. <laughs> some of them because you're on this list, and I keep talking about this list. Some of them, and I've stopped authorizing gratuity payments. They said, when you start doing your job, you're going to get the gratuity. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've made it clear that any negotiations which we're doing right now, we have to discuss performance. Not only what percentage of increase you're going to get in your salary. Show me what you're doing. When you start doing your job, then we're going to discuss salary increase. If we don't face these problems candidly, take ownership for them, we're not going to be able to fix them. We'll take one or two brief questions or comments. Rose and then Kevin. What is the policy regarding the If you have a class of 1 to 9 to 9, 10 working days. If you have a class of 100 to 250, you've got 15 working days. If your class is between 251 and 499, 20 working days. If you have a class of over 500, which is a very small group, you have one month. Some people have three, six students, and they cannot get their grades in, in six weeks. Well, just a quick comment, not to follow up. I asked that because I wondered um, what was the, if there's any penalty for relationship. There are going to be penalties as of now. And the other thing that I wanted to see, I'll follow this, And the deans who are here know that I have no compunction about being tough on this. The deans are part of this, they've got to do their jobs better. The heads have got to do their jobs better. And we as a university have to ask, what is it that the registry is not doing well enough? This is not a time to be pointing blame elsewhere. 
there's got to be individual and institutional ownership. We take one more question on coming okay. here, and then we move on to the right? Um, I would like to propose that uh, you develop, right, uh, something for potential real estate investors to come and look at the possibility of joint partnership, right, uh, public partnership with you guys in terms of the housing. Uh, you know that uh, that has been feasible at St. Jordan's. You know that now a major contribution to the uh, financial state of the university. I think you can make an argument to potential real estate investors that this is a good investment. You'd like to hear some more of that from Professor Mohammed. No, I mean, who is a lot of your observation. Uh, as they interface with corporate entities. Uh, right. But you're absolutely right. Okay. Thank you. Let's start with the We're going to hear from Deputy Vice Chairman. The first time I had to make a presentation on TIE, I went to a board with all the Apple Pie symbols and the mathematical symbol of the pie. And we grew accustomed to the acronym. I'm now able to say pie without wincing. <laughs> so, welcome to the presentation on planning international engagement. Back, or as we build, 
it should be done better. The desired outcomes are fit for purpose, planning, monitoring, and evaluation, quality assurance, function across university units and systems. And I want to emphasize the word systems so that we get the sense that they're interlocking parts of the University of Guyana. Second was pretty important to me, the culture of P and Q across the university. Um, Having the systems without a culture means that the systems will always function. So how do we build that culture? And of course, will the capacity for PMEQ across the university is very important. The Vice Chancellor asked us to talk a little bit about our achievements. Um, one of the things that we sought to do was to develop standards for new and rehabilitated buildings in the first again. So that there's a certain look and feel, but more importantly, that there's some minimum standards, like paying attention to persons with disabilities, making sure that they're energy efficient, making sure that the architecture is so weird, not so weird, wacky, and wonderful that there's a dissonance, but that we, we progress and that we're progressive in how it looks. But there are other things um, that we need here at the university, and one of them is modularity. We cannot afford to have fixed functions, and so we have to be able to share space over time and for different groups. And so modularity is a very key principle, and there's some others. The second is we've been drafting some minimum requirements for food services. One of the things that has always bothered me at the university again is that I don't buy it from some places where I don't see running water. So if our food services don't have access to running water, in my mind, they're a public health challenge. So developing those minimum standards for food services is absolutely critical. And food services right now the University of Ghana are on the service. If you wanted a hamburger or a cup of tea right now, there is absolutely no place to go except we truck them in over here. And that includes things like executive dining as well as being able to buy a donut for the equivalent of a US dollar. A draft land use plan, believe it or not, the university is virtually out of space. Now I know that a lot of persons see a lot of green patches and think we have a lot of land. We really don't. We have undeveloped land, and so uh, a coherent land use plan with appropriate zoning is critical for us to move forward. Um, the university is already hosting ISD in the forensics lab, and so there is a precedent for us to host government institutions, and right now we're in discussion with three government agencies to host uh, an institute for the creative arts, the Bureau of Standards, and the Food and Drug Agency, um, just somewhere behind that. Uh, an agreement with Movie Town, um, the implementation of that agreement vis-a-vis -vis how we move forward with uh, energy efficiency and the mobile money, um, which is currently on the negotiation. The next one is something to which I've been contributing for a while and which requires a lot of back and forth across the university. Uh, terms of reference for revised HR policies and procedures. And um, I'm happy that the four committees you see next have finally got on the way. I actually brought them with me from my previous assignment, which is to develop or redevelop to be a course of conduct for staff and students, um, something for people with disabilities, and the last one on the right of religious expression here at the University of Yemen. The last assignment that I had is now concluded. My chancellor was the onboarding of seven. So I've been eight years in challenges for planning. We have a clear mandate and vision. We have an engaged team, and there's a lot of the will for the University of Yale. On the challenges, PIU is now becoming known across campus, and so people will come up to you and say, What do you do? or they will say, You do nothing. Either case, it means the same thing. Um, I talked about the culture, and we don't have counterpart personnel in the bursary and HR for planning. And I put there in adequate transportation because I'm one of those persons who doesn't like to circle downtown for planning, for parking, but I go downtown. 
major tasks for 2017-2018 will be development of the strategic plan. Um, there's one in place, kind of, but kind of outdated. Enhanced plant. Um, energy, big challenge, sewage, even bigger challenge for the University of Ghana. IT, not so big challenge. And my favorite one, an integrated management information system so that the SRMS speaks to the HRMS, it speaks to what's happening in finance, etc. etc. The institute institutionalize the planning function and implement the hosting agreements, the minimum standards. I want to talk a little bit about ECD. On March, International Women's Day, a group of women who are here singing and dancing, we have a serious conversation. I asked them, what would you like the Vice Chancellor to do before March um, 8, 2018? And overwhelmingly, the first thing that came to mind was they needed a place where children and babies can be hosted on campus while mothers were here. There were a lot of other things, you know, the gym and all of that stuff. But the ECD Center is one that I've shared with the Vice Chancellor. He's embraced it. And we have some pending matters on workload policy and HR policies. I put the last one on the table mostly because I am an EPR person and I found that the first EPR we don't have any emergency preparedness and response. So that to my absolute horror, when there's a fire, and the university again has had several of those in the last few years, people will actually go up to the fire and they don't know to stay away. There's no place to assemble and all that stuff. So there's something that needs to be done there. On international engagement, we've taken as our tagline, bringing the world to UG and taking UG to the world. And the desired outcomes, advancing the international agenda in line with the strategic priorities, and commemorating and celebrating major international milestones, just to remind us that we're part of the region and the world. Well, we managed 30, 73 MOUs, 34 of which are active, some need to be buried with a nice funeral, and some can be reanimated. We've also managed over the last few months working across the university to establish agreements with the London South Bank University, Professor Mando is here, we just managed to sign one. I think we're in the process of completing the signature on some research on solar energy with FIU and UWI St. Augustine. We have signed on to a very interesting consortium of USA, Caribbean um, universities and colleges with medical efforts to deal with things like language, bridging programs, research about carnival, which is so very important to place like Diana, where martial money has become not just a national social event, but a national economic event. We're developing relationships with the University of Alberta. Uh, Professor Lucas, Dr. Grayson, and I will be in Canada next month. Um, we're just at the very, very beginning of developing a relationship with the University of Victoria, Amapa University on language, um, Pretoria on business and tourism, University of Alberta on engineering and business, and of course the government of Japan, China, Mexico, and Australia, which are much more slow-moving vehicles. We are reanimating our relationship with the Anton de Kong University. Um, a couple of us will be in Suriname next week around language and agriculture with the University of French Guiana around language. And I'm hopeful with Nebraska Lincoln simply because a good old guy, this old kissy boy, old beauty person is there, and that's always a good hope. I'm very pleased that after a month of work starting in 2015, we've got to go ahead on the CDB grant for $5.5 million for a new library, and the planning has been initiated. We had a team. Um, four persons go to Alberta and UWI last week to look at some libraries there, and I hope that they will go ahead. The CIA agreement, I just wanted to touch on this very much because it links with something that you may see in the news about the J. Ains Law School. We still do have access to the region's law schools, but it's probably a good idea for Diana to have a law school so that our students map treated like footballs from time to time. Enablers and challengers. We have a clear mandate and vision. 
We have interested and generally supported by the fees, and I'm so pleased that I have some conducive office space, so let me thank the person so very much for hosting me for nine months. I went there for six weeks and ended up staying nine months in the birth street. We now have decent office space, so limited. Some challenges. Challenges. Limited internal absorptive capacity and responsiveness. I think Vice Chancellor sometimes refers to it as molasses. Very ad hoc, piecemeal approaches to partners. But sometimes we go to a partner for an official meeting and they say, well, we just spoke, I spoke to such and such a person. Are we giving them $200 for this workshop to buy refreshment? It's not very strategic and not very coherent. Um, it's, well, okay, I'm obsessed with transport. Language gaps in our team, and we made a commitment to do that. And of course, in-house legal counsel, so that before we get too far into an agreement, we have some clarity on the legalities, what we can and <coughs> what we cannot do. Major plans for 2017 and 2018 to conclude agreements and arrangements for language, for exchanges in agriculture. I put seven together, but it's business entrepreneurship and tourism, and of course, engineering, which is so very fundamental. The implementation of the CBD grant. Um, the solar farm operational, that would be a dream come true. The energy and IT assessments completed, and hopefully we have some kind of funding and financing for upgrading. This one is critical, the assessment and design of the suite system. And I come back to where I've always started with my life, and enhanced focus on human rights and related matters. Thank you very much. Let me ask you that we do the following. Quickly get the... On this occasion, I don't want Dr. Thomas, if there's any other things you can ask, but I would prefer you come up with me too. We are representing the Georgia, the state of Georgia, metro Atlanta area. Um, we all have a copy of this, this white sheet, which outlines the role of ERAs that was given to us, or mandated by the DC to us, last June, and we are here to highlight what we did with um, number six. Look at the sixth item of requirement of an ERA, and I'm just up here because we're running. So let you know what we did. We took the mandate extremely serious, as we are here to support and make a difference in the goal and vision of the Vice Chancellor. So, let me just say what we did, we did following the New York people closely, because it looked like they have high energy, now the people in Georgia, people in the South, North, <laughs> anyhow. So what we did, we went there, we were um, invited to be here for this conference. We had we held a meeting, and I had a meeting, a few of us were, were there. And we decided that we will do the dollar for Georgia, which was, <laughs> which was uh, one of Dr. Don Paul Ryan's idea, suggestion, and it was working as I saw it in last September when I attended the function in New York. So I'm just going to highlight quickly what we bring to the, what course we bring in from Georgia. Uh, for the, at the first Guyana Association of Georgia meeting, we, we shared our idea, myself and Dr. Thomas, and we were able to do the dollar for UG, and we're going to be doing it at every meeting of the Guyana Association of Georgia, we meet every third Sunday in the Guyana Association building, 1970 Palooza Road. So if you're in Georgia, you come and put your dollar. So the first meeting, we made $50. And in October of last year, and we had the pleasure of having Dr. Mohammed with us. Dr. Connor Wilson, one of the Yaris, he is here. I thought he would have been here, but he's not. But he and myself, Sandra, Dr. Thomas, Austin Thompson, both of the Yaris that were here, we were able to do a fundraiser. And at that fundraiser, we were able to raise 6,000 US dollars. The meeting just before I travel out, I decided to change my day just to make another go. And I did make that go with my little burning tactics. <laughs> <laughs> and I was able to raise two hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, and my friend the day before donated a hundred dollars. 
this is one of the aspects that I know the Vice Chancellor likes my collaborative community access because a number of the items we will be having for the um, auction are going to be no donated through contacts that I have. So we are not necessarily, these are people that I go to, they will be helping us without knowing exactly what they're doing, but because I ask and they know I always do, I always get something. So we're going to continue doing that. Um, sure, sure, we can ask anyone. You want to introduce me. Rose can add something. Um, what else do I need to add to this? Um, we, are, we have a Facebook page. Everyone will be able to see the Facebook page. It has been made public. We are working towards designing um, a website. We are using Facebook, eBlast, and Eventbrite in order to advertise our, our events. We have 300 tickets printed. We have 300 tickets printed, and so far, ticket sales are going very well. We, I, before I came, we got the tickets like a week before I came, and by the time I was coming, I had already sold a table and a half tickets. So please support us if you're in New York. Come to the event, and we are also working on the, the, the New York Renaissance Week again, because we've been doing that in conjunction with the Ghana Cultural Association, which Rose and I are members of. They provide us a table, we were able to, sh to, prov to provide literature and paraphernalia for UG to be on sale. So you can bring those polo shirts and everything. We will have more people coming out to do what we have to do. One of the things we, we are faced with in New York to host an event like this, to have the music, the DJ and photography, they are now required to have a million dollars insurance because of liability costs. And we are going to be getting the DJ provided by the gentleman of Gaida. They're going to be helping us with the DJ. And because we, and we have our resident photographer, because he is a member, we are able to divert from the insurance fee because he will be taking the photographs as a member of the group and not as an independent photographer where we would have had to pay a million dollar insurance for him to do the photos. So you see why my husband is now a part. <laughs> you see he doesn't say anything, you know. He knows what's good for him. But there's some more work that has been done by, the, by Dan Paul and his access to the Richmond Hill community in Queens. Rose is going to say something, then Paul is going to add a little bit more. Michael and I have to need to go do our give back, so we wanted to make sure that this was done today. But I don't have to check for you. The potential we have for this event is to raise at least 20,000 US dollars. I just wanted to quickly add um, some highlights to what Allison just said. One of the things that I did not say well in my life is that I'm still culturally involved in the States. I am the Assistant Cultural Director of Ghana Cultural Association. Now, my plea is if you're in New York around Labor Day weekend and you are able to come to Ghana Cultural Association's events, please come because it would be nice for me to make a way for our attending audience to see you. And the reason I say that is that around that time, I am seen as culture, and I think it would blur the vision of UG and what UG is about. So I urge you, if you're able to come to New York around that time, it's Labor Day weekend, and you come, come look for me so that we can get together and make a plug for UG, and maybe ask for that dollar in our environment to make a difference. I mean, I'm asking you to help me. They don't take me seriously if I'm not talking culture when it's a cultural event. And I'm serious about that. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thanks. Great. <laughs> I just want to announce that um, my company, Orion Consulting Inc., will be given to you the thousand dollars. You can get it in American Express if you want to take it tomorrow. The only reason why I don't have a check, I forgot to take the checks when I left my house. I'm 
Thank you, this is going to be brief. Uh, let me begin with Confucius, who said that every step leads to the mountain, every step leads to the University of Bahia. I just refine uh, Confucius. Uh, let me talk about Citron for uh, a man who wants uh, Eastern philosophy. He said, you must walk a million miles for China. So the Vice Chancellor will walk a million miles for the University of Bahia. Um, now we started with Dollar for UG, um, was an idea that we had, and I'm so glad that Martin took it up for Georgia and raised so much money. We did raise some for uh, New York, from the New York branch, and we had a ride in the park in these various events, which we presented in Vice Chancellor. Um, we did lots of publicity in the West Indian, the newspaper for which I write on a weekly basis. And uh, we have done a lot of work publicizing the achievements of the University of Guyana, all the things that the university has done in a positive way, and that has gone on Facebook and all over the social media as well. The Vice Chancellor and I spoke on YouTube, um, and a lot of people saw it, if you want to keep telling me about it, and uh, it was like well, five minutes long in which he outlined his vision for the University of Guyana. And I believe that during that presentation, I presented my check to him in person of five hundred dollars there as well. So we have lots of social events uh, coming up. Um, last August, the Vice Chancellor and Steve visited our temple um, in Queens for a session there, and some more donations were given to him. At that time, we came out with our own version of a T-shirt which said "I love MG," and uh, we gave it out some for free, some were sold. Um, some were given sent to Maryland in Georgia. I think she sold some there as well. Um, and made a donation uh, to the University of Guyana. Um, we have approached various people to help in the Queens area, the Richmond Hill area, and uh, we were talking to them about the likely possibility of having two scholarships uh, presented to the university, one for the team and one for Linden. And uh, we are hoping that it's going to be for two females, women in science. So that is something we are we're working and working on right now. I was very privileged to come personally for Sister Noel's function. Um, it was a wonderful event. Again, the vision of the Vice Chancellor in action, and it was well received. I went back to New York, wrote it up again for the media. It was sent all over the world, and people responded very, very positively, especially her former students, of which I am one. Um, finally, the Vice Chancellor spoke at a Papa Parade earlier this year. Well, he took a trip there for that. It was freezing cold. Very, very, oh, it was nasty, very nasty. But the Vice Chancellor braved the weather. As a matter of fact, he was one of the leaders of the parade, holding the banner of the parade, just moving over the park. And then he, I introduced him on stage, he went on stage and spoke so well about the vision, his vision. Uh, for the University of Guyana. So what we will do is to continue to work, as you heard, with the young people, because we have to get the young people involved. I'm so passionate about you in New York. And there are lots of Guyanese teachers in the high school system in New York City. We want them, who are graduates of UG, so we want them to now be involved in a very uh, concrete way to publicize um, the university. And I'll be a day. You know, in New York there's something called these days when we celebrate village day, where you celebrate. As distinct from hometown associations, these are village days in the summer in which they celebrate Albion Day and Essequibo Day and Cloud Grove Day and Cane Grove Day. And people who are from these villages in the Richmond Hill area come out in a park. They get permission to use the park, play music, have food and so on. It becomes a big party and they have big celebrations. Now, Albion Day is coming up on August the 12th, and thousands of people are expected to be in that park. The organizers of the Albion Day owe me a favor. So when I get back here, I'm gonna pull that favor back and say, you know what, the Vice Chancellor is gonna be with us on August the 12th in the park for Albion Day. 
and hopefully we'll do something positive uh, for Albany. So that is something coming up. Uh, before I end, uh, let me make my personal donation here to the Vice Chancellor. I know he likes to see this color for Eugene. So here's a hundred dollars. One more thing that um, we plan on doing, which which is going to be which is going to be to add a donate button to our Facebook page and the, the website when we have it running, um, because we feel if you're going to come and see what we're doing, you can as well click that button and donate something. We are we do have a bank account established. We will be able to take funds, uh, alumni and friends of UG. Anything we make. It will be tax deductible for you, and Dan Paul is also going to be running community events announcing what the group is doing, and will be available for you to see in the West Indian. So let's take a group picture with the New York, and then we'll hear from the Hey everyone, hello again. I am going to be try to be very brief because I know we are like pushing up against time. I. Part of the planning that's taking on taking off in pace is synergizing consonant with the Vice Chancellor's vision that he set out actually while he was actually interviewing for his job in this very room uh, while he was giving his public presentation. He said that there is uh, he was going to work on floor plans. One was capital investment, other one alumni, academic enhancement, um, economic, I have to go close. Breaking into 
people's pockets and resources <laughs> on certain banks and so on. But breaking in the, the culture and breaking ourselves into a new culture and a new way of seeing and doing things, and then bringing in. That's when we um, bringing in whatever we need to do, including people, resources, and personnel. So our focus for the next three years has really been on, um, it's going to be on 11, really, 10, 10 uh, Bs. So one is building the architecture. So we have to create a whole new office. We have to do that. We've pretty much done that. But um, I was very happy to hear one of my colleagues this morning say that that office has everything they need. Ours has this halfway staff right now, so we're looking for the other staff. And hopefully within the next uh, couple of months, we'll be up to speed with everything that all the staff that we need. Staff training, because nobody in the university and in this country can speak to us about philanthropy at all. We were very lucky to be able to get uh, one of the vice chancellor's old colleagues from FIU to come and do two workshops and continues to stay with us uh, in contact. So a lot of research, a lot of webinars, a lot of reading and a lot of um, adaptation because what pertains in North America for philanthropy does not work in this country at all. Um, and not all sorts of things. Building that capacity, building the brand, building policies. Um, Marlon noted that there was an ERA and I noted in, in, in the uh, folders today that you have an ERA in terms of reference. Even things like that, simple things like that had to be created from scratch because we didn't have any of those things. So building the policies and give, giving policies and books, somebody just wrote me and said, could I send some books to UG? Well, people, UG was a famous dumping ground for people's libraries that they, you know, they didn't have a place to put the library, they want to get rid of it. They would send books here and some of the books we could use so we needed to develop a policy and a system of how to how to have that giving be, be intentional, systematic, and relevant to what we do. So we did some of that as well. Um, building programs, building relationships, building trust. This I'm going to speak to this later on as part of one of the key challenges that we have in the context of everything that's happening in the press. Um, that's not positive about UG and, espe and especially internal, what I would call uh, poisoning of the pond that makes it really difficult for us to move forward, but we are doing that. Um, building bridges, there's a history of distrust and so on in the country, in the university and alumni, among, uh, amongst alumni and uh, really and truly, that is something that is a challenge to us. Um, building the back, our projected target for this first build-out was 0.5 million US dollars in cash and gifts. And I'm happy to say at this point in time that we've actually met that target and exceeded it. Um, and I'll tell you how. <laughs> yes, because I think, I think that's an achievement. And for those people, you know, when this office was built out, a lot of people would have said, you know, why are you spending money building out an office like this? How um, is that? Is it, is it the best um, investment? And the vice chancellor would have said yes. He's building on a Hamilton report. It said we should do this, and that this is a, a way to raise money. And there are a lot of skeptic, skepticism around the place. Pace's annual budget is about thirty-eight million Ghana dollars, or sixty thousand US dollars. And so you can see that in the first, within the first ten months. If you are expending 60,000 US dollars and you're going to get back 600,000, that you really are doing something right and that it is something that you can, we can build on and can actually work as a good resource mobilizer for the university. So I think that should put paid to most of what people were talking about. But of course, nobody knew what was going to happen. So I guess that skepticism is healthy. Okay, so highlights for the first 10 months. We set a pace, we had Turkin and Tain talks, many of you who would have listened to um, these eight wonderful events. Now, this is a very important um, branding and civic engagement outreach activity of the university, but not only is it about branding, it also is about this kind
kind of knowledge environment, the national uh, systematic structuring of the national thought that Professor Scott and we see have been talking about because a lot of the things that we speak about are important topical things. What we have to do now is to find a way to use that what comes out of there in a more effective way and that's something that's engaging, engaging our attention. But every single one of these has been funded by some external organization um, to the tune of each one of them depending is about three to four thousand US dollars so it's a little bit of money. But they've seen the uh, the um, the importance of them. And now, when I go to ask, I don't get the kind of pushback that I got when we first started. It's the, oh, it's a talk shop. Why are we doing this? I think it's very clear now. Why are we doing it? We supported the Distinguished Lecture Series. This was not our main thing. It came out of the Vice Chancellor's office, run by Dr. Scott's um, AE office. But we supported because we had this young lady, Nikita. We have some expertise in PACE that works on design, videography, media. Um, that's the academic strength that we have. So we tend to backstop and support most of the other activities there, or many of them. We also support the ERAs. Um, we have we we inducted a few in Saint Lucia and in Antigua, and of course in Grenada when the vice chancellor was there. Uh, outreaches. Uh, we've completed several, and this is very important, you know, uh, on Sunday night when I walked into the, 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 the princess, a lady met me and she said, I, I'm here. So I said, okay, welcome. <laughs> Polite. And she said, I know you don't remember me. I said, but I, I kind of remember your face. She said, from where? And I'm thinking, I know this lady. <laughs>
how to ask college students to the phone or hard to phone. So we created one recently and had a very nice fundraiser, the first one, which was raised for peace, which raised about 4.2 million dollars, about 20,000 US, for that fund. Um, and that is going to be used in the kind of ways that, you know, for students, not scholarships, but for students who have small problems, who just need a hand up, you know, maybe a rent, maybe somebody stole a laptop, maybe somebody died, just for short periods. And the scholarship fund is a very different fund from that. Um, we also have been supporting the development of programs, the, 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 the Masters in Psychology that's coming on stream, and the Masters in Visual Communication, both in terms of leading some of the consultations and working with teams within, technical teams within the university to support the work of BBC um, AE uh, in the U.S. Why? Because so much work has to happen so fast that really every office is thin and whoever we can find to work with and to support just to get the work done, we do it. This is not always the best way, but for now, we are working in that way with our colleague um, entities. So, here are two interesting projects. This one here, I see Danny Cruz smiling. We work closely with everybody, including maintenance. Um, the top one is Pear Street, um, former residence of the Vice Chancellor that became later on um, the, uh, the, the office of the Pro Chancellor of the University that fell into this repair. This this is the design um, of the building which we hope to see ready in 2018 by maybe mid-year. It's just been approved and it is going to be what we call UG Inn. It is going to be an eight room uh, inn as well as a two room conference facility which hopefully will start raising some money from the university. This is coming to us, the central government gave us a small uh, amount of money, I think $38 million to give the university that piece um, to refurbish, but we hope to see this being an income generator. Uh, so next year when you guys come, you'll have to fight to get a book in, in, in there to, um, to, to live in. But this is, this is cool. This one at the bottom is one of, one of our notional projects that we worked on, and I'm hoping against hope that we could actually we could actualize that. The one with the three buildings at the bottom is what would be known if we're able to get this grant from the Mexicans at the Yavatun Center for Informatics on campus. It will hold a special collection, if we're able to get it, um, of the um, Natural Resources Library. Um, so that'll be a section of the library that is specific to natural resources, um, the New Communication Center, and um, some, natural, some technology labs for oil and gas. That grant is in, and if we get it, it will be five million US dollars. But we've been working on it for um, for well since last year in November. Um, as you can see, we received several. I've told you the figure, the, the ballpark figure. These are just some photographs showing all the various ways in which people give and which you can give. So there are ideas. Somebody has just given us five hundred thousand dollars in plants, right, um, and pots another hundred thousand dollars in pots so that we could sum up that you know people give whatever they can give these are alumnus who are you see dr greg Stanley there in antigua speaking to students wherever we go we try to speak to find the, the children of guyanese of guyanese uh, the diaspora and speak to them about ug but not only speak to them about ug speak to them about diana because even though we go to speak about ug invariably the questions come to us about Diana, so we have to be prepared to speak about their country that they're, some of them have never seen because they're born overseas. But that's also a very inspiring and honorable and you know, a wonderful thing to be able to do, to have the opportunity to do it. Um, branding and PR events. Uh, we have created the I Love from the I Love Fiji campaign, a number of things, but the one I'd like to focus on, oh, is, oops, yeah, this, the bottom here, here, these. This Arts and Residence uh, program that BC just restarted, in which Keith Way is one of the first, uh, is the first, not one of the first, is the first one and, um, since Martin Carter, created a workshop in this very room in which
which Keith was playing music, and students from the art department were painting what they heard him, what they heard from the music. And some of these paintings at the bottom here are from art that were created during that workshop. We then transitioned from that to make um, mugs and key rings uh, and t-shirts out of those um, paintings. The way in which that's going to work, yes, it does deserve a round of applause both the team and the art department. The dean is here of the Faculty of Education and Humanities, whose who's shot that comes out of. But the, what we've worked out with the students is that part of the sales goes to the students and part goes to the faculty, part comes to um, one of the funds. Uh, so people were walking around the place copying the designs without asking, please don't put us into trouble, we have agreements, so we need to, um, we need to figure out how to work here or what you're doing into that. Um, these are just meetings and events that we have gone to. Um, here, if you've gone to Antigua, you know I've talked about those outreaches, we meet anywhere. And here is wonderful uh, couple in Antigua, Guyanese couple, they have this Kite show restaurant downtown in Antigua, and they gave us the space. And so, what would happen when we were there for three days? Every afternoon, after we did our, 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 our television interviews, people would come and we would sit down and consult with them. We would ask us all kinds of things about UG, about Guyana. And so, this is one of those that's the space there. And these are, of course, those luminaries. I won't go into it because um, the registrar spoke in detail about those trips through the, through the region and, and how that not only helped us to find alumni but also market UG, market the country and also bring the new students uh, to market our new program. So that's a very, um, and he has indicated how those, um, how those trips are actually paying back already just by the numbers of applicants he's seeing from those countries. Um, here again, just a few of the projects that we support as part of our community engagement. And again, all of those community engagement projects are not paid for by UG. All of them are sponsored by different people. And now what is happening is that because we've created a model, people are actually seeking us out to ask us if we would host X, Y, or Z for them. That helps, um, it's, we're, we're able to do this um, fairly well because one of the things that has been a challenge, and I'll speak to that in a minute, is really that the university has not kept good records and good track of its alumni, both alumni as students and faculty. And so our job was really difficult to start with because we didn't really have much to begin with. But we were able to use some really interesting, innovative means of tracking a snowball methodology of tracking, starting with one and going to the next. And our I Love UG campaign was very instrumental in that because it allowed people who saw people being, you know, kind of promoted and what they said about UG to contact us and then we started to build from there. But that is a very, very uphill task. Um, the, I am, however, we have a database now of about 15,000 starting, we started with like about, about 1,000 alumni of UG um, who have both in terms of staff because we use staff as alumni as well and students and so that is a good bit we have to clean it now and on Monday afternoon I was privileged to chair a panel at the diaspora conference in which this young lady um, from Mexico who runs their diaspora center made a presentation and she made me she made my my year because she said in her presentation, she was saying that Mexico has about over a million uh, skilled people, all students, just the skilled ones, not the unskilled ones, all over the world. And even though they have dedicated resources to tracking them and engaging them, they've only been able to do so with 6,500 after seven years. And I mean, this is on tape, she's actually said this. So um, we haven't done so bad. The, the issue now is how to get people to give back. And what I find, and I think Ross would identify with this, is every time we pick up the phone, or most times we pick up the phone, with a recent UG alum, not the ones from prior to 15 years, like most people in the room, but the, the recent ones whose data we have much more easily, um, their contact information, we have to go through a counseling session with them. 
and I'm very serious. Some of them will cost you. Physically, Guyanese, good Guyanese, FNS costs. What it is you calling me for? You she did me this, 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 da da da. And after three or four uh, engagements, right? Because that's very disheartening. And so we have to build in like a kind of a, a counseling kind of approach to some of them. Find out, take them, listen to them, what their problems were with UG, what UG did them, all of this. And then find out from them, like who in UG, what was your good experience, and then start from there. So that is a little difficult, um, but it is a reality that we have to, to deal with. And so the question of one university and a holistic approach, that, that one section and one office really is as important as the next, is really, really being brought home to pace because the student experience that PC has been talking about, the academic experience, what happens in maintenance, what happens in facilities, that is important because that is what the student will take with them. And when they become alone, if that is not good, I can't do my job or I have to take a lot of abuse and need psychological counseling at the end of a week. <laughs> um, and not only my young staff because we are constantly at the brunt of taking what a PNB had here. Um, so the culture, no cultural philanthropy in the place, in the country, and in, in, in the diaspora necessarily, so that's being built. People just give to who they like and what they want, with no rhyme or reason. That's how that works. That is changing. So um, we have to figure out what they like and who they like before we can you know, move in. But uh, as, as bigger companies and so come in, we are changing that systems. Tracking money coming into university is really difficult, not because of anything bad happening in the university, because we have old archaic systems that are not designed to be responsive, to be quick, to be transparent, and to track. And that is something that we're working on now, not only for PACE, but for everything else. Enough said about that. A history, no history dilemma, well, that is, we have a history that people know, a perception of the university, but still we have no data, no records that we can actually go to. So people have a perception, we know somewhere out there there is history and there's stuff, but we can't really access, we're rebuilding that now. So that's really definitions. This is a big thing. And because a lot of these offices have just come on to, I think uh, Dr. Professor Scott related to it, a lot of these offices have just come on to come, have just emerged. We have to work out what we call the people portfolios and synergies. There is a lot of overlap, you may have heard them, uh, some of them this morning, and I would sit and wonder, like, how is it that this person is doing, this office is doing, doing this or that? There's a lot of overlap, we have to sit down and work those out. And a lot of that is because a lot of this is emerging now, and so those clarities have to take place. Um, but that's really important if we are to be as efficient as we need to be. If I were to put any challenge about anything else in the university other than this one about definition of definitional issues, which are really important, is the continuous bad press that we've been having. Um, um, some, most of it unfounded, and some of it out of context, not people not understanding what the true situation is. And for me, it's like walking up and slipping back down every time. Because every time we have a big event, which is very often, something happens that somebody else has created. The next thing, I get a call saying, but you know what? We were going to give you X amount, but because of you, or because we commit a rent, we're going to only give you 10% of it. So that can't work. That is very, 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 very painful and very destructive. And it doesn't help the university. Because PACE doesn't raise funds for PACE. PACE raises for the university. The same place that is turning on some of these things that are not helpful. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't speak. I'm saying that we need to speak with context and with fact. And not, you know, in a destructive way. I've talked about this already. Um, low internal capacity. We have to, we need three more staff members, which we hope to get soon. Um, because as we build out, we've still working with all four of my staff and me in one office. That is not going to work out, although I do have a nice office now. I've gotten the old vice chancellor's office, but it's still 
I still need space for my staff, resources, and we have a steep learning curve because there's so much to learn um, in a short space of time. So we're actually doing work learning and fighting fires at the same time. And you can imagine what that's like, but it's probably not as bad for me as it is for DC because I only have a small part. He has a whole thing to do with. Um, so in conclusion, I just want to say that PACE really is working to support a one UG vision. And when we say one UG, we're not speaking about UG um, just only Turkheim. We're speaking about TIN. We're talking about our four set centers around the world and our diaspora. There's a UG diaspora that we are um, working to bring in, to embrace, and to ensure this back. There's no wrong time to do the right thing. So whenever we, we get, we can do it, we do it. Um, and where love, respect, and a single vision exists, there's no will to conquer. So we shouldn't be fighting about who's what because <coughs> there really should be synergy. Pace emerges during exciting times in Guyana, very exciting times. So I'm hoping with what we have actually been doing, this is fundamental, rudimentary work. All of this work is going to continue again in the next 2018. Um, we, when Guyana actually does begin to make money, we will have laid the foundations and the infrastructure to receive it. And we will be able to contribute to a good experience for faculty and staff so that those alumni that come out and those experiences that come out and the future creates will in fact be able to pay back into the system. I just wanted to leave last night when I was doing this. I haven't sung the song for ages, I'm not allowed to sing for y'all. Um, but when I was actually finishing off the presentation, for some reason, this song kept came into was coming into my head. And I thought, you know what? It, it really does encapsulate in a sense part of it what peace is trying to do in a space that has been poisonous, that has been dysfunctional, that has been painful for many and um, for so long. And it is from George Benson's The Greatest of All. It says, teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Learning to love ourselves is the greatest love of all. That's what we're trying to do for you. Thank you very much. Let me recommend, thank you, Professor Mohammed, the following that we get expeditiously in the bus because we push Minister Harmon back by half an hour, and that time in that time arrives in 20 minutes. We find after lunch an hour to hear from Mr. Kudu and take one of those breakout rooms and the ERAs and anyone else who wants to come can join us here on the facilities and then have any questions or comments.